And uh, if ever they do be successful enough to overwhelm S2G with all those clap closers, Innocent from afar, he could just do all the free hits and he could just damage the members of S2G from afar. Absolutely, man. So much poke, really, with the Desenada, with the Rhapsody, the new changes here. And as a gold lane, we've actually have had a lot of discussions on the Granger right. pick itself. You know, does it do better in the jungle? Mm -hmm. Does it do better in the gold lane? And I think most of us actually agree that it does do better in the gold lane. You get free farm, you get a lot of gold in the start, and it helps with the stacks, but Innocent, he actually goes for Purify. So this is also, I think, something that we can talk about for the Granger. Uh -huh. You are pretty elusive with it. You're actually quite slippery with the with the new like Granger. You actually dash quite well. So the Purify is a really good choice for Innocent to yep. just escape from the CC that S2G can provide towards them. Yep, and I'm eager to know and how he like decided to go for his emblem builds. We're seeing the Impure Rage as well, and all you know is that. If you don't really rely on mana, you get that uh, additional passive returned on your HP instead. Oh. So you get to see an additional layer of sustain uh, sustainability, perhaps, for uh, Innocent by the time he really wants to, or if S2G even attempts to go for him in the early stages of the game. But Selangor Red Giants, it does seem like they're actually preventing this brute force playstyle come out from S2G. We know for a fact that it's one of their specialties. They really want to force things out early on, but it's SRG! Sky is really dashing forward. That's a good Terrify and a talk down onto Begin. Graham walks up with the Terrify as well. Oh, Graham still able to get some damage down, but Begin still escapes with the Flicker. Great setup though for SRG Stormy. Oh! Dies in the mid lane, gets the first blood under the tier one. And that should be turtle number one for free. Seriously, he didn't let him go. They needed to get that pick off. So S2G, right now, they're absolutely unable to contest for this turtle. And we're expecting that this is more of a rotation we're seeing from their side. It's an XP lane, which is more uh, active in the early Whoa. stages. But Pabu, he keeps to be the next target. And Stormy, though, he gets traded as well. That's when I'm offended over to Yums, too. I don't know about that trade now. Kram is going to be walking forward. Kazoo dashes forward, gets the kill, and Kram going with the blaze round, gets frozen up, and gets CC down. Ooh. SRG overextending after the turtle fight. And I think that's uh, one thing you really need to consider if you are SRG, because early on, I wouldn't doubt that they were already taking hold of the lead. They couldn't even, or S2G couldn't even pay much attention to Innocent or the other lanes. Cram, he could just freely rotate out of the XP lane and actively participate in the first few skirmishes we've seen. But this might actually backfire if they do not manage things mm -hmm. well. S2G, if we were talking about SRG's ability to close the gap, S2G can't do the same. They have high mobility heroes. And speaking of closing gaps, oh. that's the flicker forced out for Karam. Yep. Already a big resource burned out there. 50 seconds for the turtle, so they have that resource already burned out. It's great to deny those crazy engages. Lunar walks up, gets the I'm offended. It's a bit more poke over to Cram, who will just sustain back up on the Khalid. Here, though, for S2G, it really seems like early on, maybe they didn't have those ultimates to fight with. But turtle number two onward, they should have these big ults that you were talking about. Yep. Bridge Glacier for begin. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a risk that Stormy takes it though. He's in the bush, gets the item offended over to Lunar now. Oh, so Rainy Sandstorm, great flicker for Lunar. Skies walks in, Bridge Glacier will be able to stun him up. Skies brought back into the turret, poke down as well by begin. And both teams will decide to disengage. 18 seconds for the turtle to spawn in the game. There's a team fight that happened once again right before um, uh, this uh, turtle that we were talking about. And as 2G Esports, it seemed like they really were able to adjust on the fly. They're taking things a little bit more slow because they know that either way, the uh, most important aspects of their lineup, it's not really being noticed here by uh, SRG as of now. Really, Siggy Boom, he's just able to take his yep. farm, and it might be this time that we see him also take part in the action. Good red treat from Kazoo, good disengage from S2G. They know that SRG have a lot of CC, so they just go for the objective and bounce. Yep, right now though, this might be the uh, point where S2G gradually focus on the things they want to build up on, which is really Siggy Boom, because at this point, if they really want to be more active in terms of the team fights and they really want to be more confident, then it might just be time that they really need to include their damage dealers. Because even though SRG, they've been really aggressive in the first few portions of the game, we saw how S2G is able to deny them of that. They're able to like interrupt these aggressive plays coming in from Selangori Giants whenever Lunar is part, whenever Begin uses a beautiful timing of the Frigid Glacier. So they really just need to complement it with enough damage and they get higher chances of turning things around. There's just so much stakes here, you know, at play in the Land of Dawn currently. SRG playing in their hometown, trying to complete that golden road for S2G, trying to prove the world wrong yep. that they 
them winning MTC was a fluke. Yep. I think a lot of people still have that in their minds, you know, thinking that Ulfetnar is the better team from Turkey. So far, they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe mm -hmm. against probably one of the world's best here, and it's all with, like you said, Siggy Boom, getting the boom in him. Once he gets those item power spikes, it's going to be massive. Yeah. This Bruno, there's a reason it was so heavily pioed mm -hmm. in the Swiss, or sorry, in the wild card, yes. and all the way, I would say, even in rank games, right? Yep. So easy to execute. And you can see the SUG at this point, they're really just stopping SRG's way to try I to agree. take turrets and snowball. I agree, because this isn't the usual kind of Bruno gameplay you really witness, right? But wait, before that, speaking of the Bruno, oh. Siggy Boom. Yep, this is all good for Siggy Boom. He wants to go for those fights there. Has the Haas Claws, I believe. That's why he's able to sustain back up. And Turtle is going to be spawning up top. SRG tried to get Pryo in the bottom lane, and now they're rotating. Yep, but Pagu, you know, this go this roamer for S2G, the moment he came in, he really brought a lot of changes to S2G in the way they play their games in the way they really adjust and uh, explore some new strategies. We know them to only stick for the 4 Protect 1 strategy before, but now we're seeing how they can really just adjust on the fly, but begin! Passive already. Brocked in, Begin will be able to flicker out, but again, big resource spent already. Cram will have to flicker too. That's another from Innocent, just trying to read out some of the positions from S2G. Cram heals back up. Okay. Now Lunar, though, he goes in and wants more! Right, I'm offended, and that's Raging Sandstorm. The captures begin in the back. Will be caught. Pops in for Glacier earlier. Lunar's still there, and it's going to be free hitting for Siggy Boom into there. Kazu with the dive. Sky is taken down, and it's still kiting away. Kazu goes in. Yom's isolated from the rest of the team, and Kazu will double kill his way into a Turtle Pryo! Stormy with a Terrify onto the midst of it all. Going for the Guiding Wind, but gets boomed down by Mr. Siggy Boom and Pagu. Innocent will be forced back on this Granger, and it's a win for S2G. You would think that would have already worked for the Selangor Red Giants, but S2G, Lunar decided to pick a fight at the exact same time. They also had the uh, the resources, they had proper counter engage. Yums was also there, he was able to zone out enough members here from S2G Esports, but they seemed like they were just prepared to take on the fight that sustained. You can actually feel it from S2G, and it's not just that, it seems like they're able to capitalize a lot more on their innate mobility. It's so crazy, we were talking about the range for Innocent too, but what he makes up for in range, I think he lacks damage. Innocent yep. hasn't really been able to put on the damage onto S2G. Maybe this Granger pick was just not that good against healing. I feel like the Mathilda has really been able to help them out in these sticky situations. On, but it does seem like we're just gonna get back into the game again. S2G are in the lead, SRG. Do they have the late game power to actually play through these team fights? Yep, they have a lot of uh, AOE, if it's just that but then you really have to see some extra work come in here from uh, Sekais as well as Innocent. So would Sekais be reliable enough to deal with those heroes from S2G, which may be a little bit more hard to reach? And could Innocent deal enough damage for those heroes from S2G who are within reach, who will be, like, covered here and, I don't know, being, like, in the front lines of whenever there's a team fight that happens later on, because as we're seeing it right now, SRG, they're still able to take the trades nonetheless, and uh, maybe it's this point in time where Sekai begins saying that, oh, maybe we should be a little bit more careful and look for the trades for the meantime. Yeah, that's the advantage that SRG definitely have with the Joy, compared to the studio, who's really, I would say, better than neutral objectives, but when it comes to split pushing, it's gonna be tough for SUG to actually send people down below. Mm -hmm. Pagu, you can see that poke damage from Innocent, and that's why we asked the question, is Granger a mid-game pick or a late-game pick? Because you can see that damage already build up. Pagu, so able to heal up. Lunar, who's behind the planet? Over to Yums. Oh. The freeze as well, poking him down. Cram, they trying to shot a bit more damage over to S2G, but both teams are just poking each other. Yeah, definitely for uh, SRG, this is the time they need to capitalize on their poking capabilities up against S2G Esports. We don't see as much sustain or in terms of like the tanky heroes from S2G as compared to uh, SRG. So they defi definitely can take advantage of that. But Ooh. once S2G decides for a commit, though that's the I am offended already used here, then SRG, oh. they really need to be careful. But as we're seeing it right now, they're slowly getting hold of what to do during this Lord dance. Mm -hmm. You can see the poking game that we were mentioning in the early game for Innocent. It's happening here in the mid game. He has some idle oh. stormy. He gets an item appended over to two. And it's a guns him down. The combo in the back is a raging sandstorm and an AOG. That's a double. And Salango Red Giants, they are finally online. 
in the 10th minute of the game. They have enough ways to scout for the members of S2G, and it seems like the plan is to take them by surprise. What a play from Stormy there, catching two members, two crucial members. And once you take out all of the frontliners, then that's easier access for Sakai's and for the rest of the members to just take out the remaining members of S2G. Let's check out that instant replay right there. Look at Stormy. Ooh. Look at Stormy. And even when there was a beautiful usage of the Frigid Laser, oh. it was a bit too late. They had no other resources to prevent the aggression from the other members of SRG. There you go. That's SRG. <laughs> Or is that the first few minutes? Man, SRG, we were talking about it, the targeting was not it. And then they just had to adapt in on the go, right? They just had to, I would say, yeah, adapt and get used to the pressure they're feeling here in as the hosts. And they're here with it. It's a Lord of the mid lane charging down as a Holy Defense already propped in. SRG utilizing Innocent's range. Wow. Pumped them down, Lunars, uh. half HP. The defense is still good. They are able to get rid of it. No Innocent way. though is cutting them down. He has a death Sonata, one more shot, Lunar low! The photo saves Pagu and Lunar, and they're forced back in their own base. And that was so aggressive from Innocent. I mean, they had a, they had an idea, there's still no flicker for Lunar, so there won't be any surprise setups just yet. Oh. But oh, there's a circling eagle! So Pagu, he's trying to run oh. away, the death Sonata hits! But he still is able to escape with the Guiding win and S2G defend. No base threats taken down. All right, so uh, S2G, they're still able to defend this in some ways. But SRG, it seems like this was the moment they've been waiting for. Now that S2G might just be gradually trapped in a certain area in the map, SRG, they can play around things a lot more. They have, again, the... I, was, I kept mentioning the Avatar of the Guardians, but they also had the Raging Sandstorm. And as long as they are able to prevent Lunar from doing his job of being the first one to take SRG by surprise or even preventing and interrupting these attempts from SRG, then there seems to be no problem anymore. They just need to force out the necessary skills that S2G keep on capitalizing for the counter engages. And then there's nothing stopping them from being too aggressive against S2G. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I think for S2G, the game plan is we're just going to try to out sustain you in the uh -oh. fights or get a massive combo. But SRG are never, or should never, actually commit to a full fight unless Innocent gets some trades, right? Mm -hmm. He shoots them from afar, gets them really low, or there's a neutral objective to fight for, then they would go in. But here, they're just going to utilize that range that we were yep. talking about, and man, Innocent, <laughs> Pagu, now where he's feeling it. Now he's feeling that damage. Yep, I'm pretty sure SRG, they're just trying to be disciplined at this point, but at the same time, still putting themselves out there, trying to make their dominance felt here against S2G. And even in terms of gold, the gold laners, you can already see just how ahead Innocent is. He's already fulfilled on this oh. Ranger, which explains the damage that Pago himself cannot even sustain. Now, it gets really concerning for S2G because they do not have catch that can actually go for Innocent. And if you do dive in, you're going to be caught by all the sustained looters low again. Every single time you walk on a base, that's a circling eagle. This very aggressive Pagu. He goes away, crab raging stats oh! and the flicker to read him out. Pagu in the skies, doesn't even matter. He was able to set up for an anticipated guiding wind dash towards that area. But even then, he flickered towards Pagu, taking out that short pickoff. And now S2G Esports, this might just be Whoa. an attempt from SRG to again commit a team fight. But they walk safely towards their tier three and force out the Frigid Glacier as well from Lunar. Mm -hmm. It's a bait or a trade rather. Innocent with the flicker, or sorry, Purify, baited out by the Frigid Glacier there. Still think for SRG though, they're just going to take it slow, right? There's no reason for them to actually push in. and. Even though Innocent uses Purify, it's a safety net that you lose out. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the Siege, you're never really going to be in a position where you should be caught, right? You have so much range and they're just going to use this with Innocent on it. Let's see how they manipulate these waves. Is it going to be a three-way push or are they going to take it slow? It does seem like it will just be a three-way push. They're looking for possibly the end. Yep, and this mid lane turret won't last for long. S2G Esports, they might have a difficulty trying to defend this. I don't know if they want to look for a play still, given this much of a gold lead in the hands of SRG. But they're only able to take out one inhibitor turret so far, and there are other waves coming in, but they will have time to defend these incoming waves from SRG. So it seems like, even for wow. SRG, they're, they're not trying to force things just yet. They're actually quite scattered around the map, and they're probably waiting for 
more information regarding S2G. They do not want to force team fights in areas where S2G might have higher chances of turning things around, but Humes uses the Avatar of the Guardians to get away, and... Oh, oh, oh no! Yeah, Sky is overextending, but it becomes a pretty good trade, I, uh, in my opinion, right? Despite Sky's getting taken down, he did get a few hits there, and it's a base turret in the bottom lane, which is a far lane. There are no objectives for the next 30 seconds, so S2G getting the kill, trading it for a turret is actually worth it for SRG. Yep. They're now becoming a little more aggressive. They get out of their base, and Kazu might gradually be able to get hold of his buffs once again. But that doesn't mean that SRG will be backing out anytime soon. Scram still, show, still shows himself out there. Oh, Kazu gets caught! That's a better crown. Stormy gonna be caught in the I'm offended too. Able to flicker out to safety as a frigid glacier gets placed down. Stormy! Boom down! Sigibu is still doing some damage. Dodging away from the Detonata as Kazu dives in onto Yums. 40 seconds still. There are no objectives for S2G to take. So SRG losing out some of these members is still okay, unless they go for these turns and siege it down. That's a tier one, almost falling. So Gibbo needs a few more shots in. Innocent can't walk up. Oh! oh. If that was a crit, it could have been different. Innocent surviving just barely will walk away. 27 seconds for the Lord. And it seems like they're gradually evening out the map. <laughs> Mirko, this wasn't the scenario we've seen earlier. Even Kram, uh -oh. he's being the recipient Boom. of the damage from Sigi Boom. And they take him out 13 seconds right before this next Lord, this level 2 Lord, this enhanced Lord. Or maybe we could wait, they could take the evolved Lord even. Now that's gonna hurt. SRG losing Skies, losing Stormy. It was still all still in the time frame of the Lord not spawning yet. But losing Kram, that's your main initiator. Sky's gonna be stunned up now as Pagu walks up. Sky's no more dashes. Once you get canceled, it's gonna be tough. It's Sky's dying. Pagu gets the final hit as he fade away, takes the kill. And Kazoo dealt with the Lord. Now he's like occupying this bush. SRG, good read with Innocent popping into that, that, that Sonata. But now it's an enhanced Lord for S2G. Why did it feel like even though SRG had the range? They really found it difficult oh. to commit the team fights when S2G were being extra careful under their base. And now that they're outside, they're being more aggressive than ever. One another! I'm offended! And a Frigid Glacier too. Good disengage from Yom's Innocent still in the midst of it all. Popping a Death Sonata. Trying to poke them away, but up top. How low is it? That's a base turret. Taken down. S2G still have the Lord, by the way. That siege was only just the minions. They are slowly pushing the wave in the bottom lane, and the reason they can actually slowly build this way... Oh, Lunar oh. goes in for the big play. Doesn't connect. Raging Sandstorm! A flank, Lunar. Caught in the midst of it all. Kazoo's in the back line away. As Pagu is able to get the circle. Ego to actually peel for Sigibum. He's still free hitting. Kazoo gets the unstoppable. The Frigid Glacier comes in. Sigibum going for the crits. Innocent still using that range, dashing away from the arrow. S2G wants to continue the siege. That was a beautiful attempt from Crown, but S2G, they were prepared. Kazoo Chikibum. blocking the members, the other members of SRG from joining the team fight, and now they're still together with their Lord. They will be able to take out all the remaining inhibitor turrets, and could this be it for SRG? No, oh, the snipe down from Kazoo! Innocent 